Yes, welcome to the Intercontinental Club Challenge. Two of these drivers are definitely going to be bulletproof, they hope, tonight. And uh, in the mid-morning as well here in Australia. I'm your host, Woody Lizard. In-game, known sim racing driver. Real name, Neil Haynes. Hope you enjoy this battle. Stage two between Kaz Sim Racing over in the northern hemisphere and uh the gravel trap legends slash anz uh sim races so it's a battle that has become quite of an annual event and this is the second time around i think they did it might be the third time they did one earlier with anz crl back in the race factor days i think it might have been but talking about that, we're here in Road America, and it's a 6.5 kilometre circuit with the 14 turns. And we're looking at a 90 minute duration race with a rolling start. They will stand, be uh, on the grid with a standing start with the clock starting to tick down, and they'll do their manual formation for the rolling start. In-game safety car, as you can see. 
And I believe there's three track cuts before drive through penalty. It wasn't confirmed, but I'm sure that may have been the decision. And the weather forecast, as you can see, early morning fog, which uh, with an overcast condition. So the race start time is for 6 a.m. in the morning. Now let's go and have a quick look now. It's what happened last year when they were at Bathurst in the V8 supercar. And you can see Kaz came out on top with 125 points compared to Gravel Trap Legend slash ANZ CRL Racing, um, ANZC Racing, and they finished on 84 points. But Gunner 180 was uh, dominant, pretty much leading most of that race with Alex not too far behind. They completed 45 laps in the, in the 90 minutes, or an hour and 40 actually quite that time. Uh, but you can see Kaz dominating from 2nd to 7th, really got those big points to claim the Intercontinental Club Challenge last year, back in October. And this time, we're here at Road America. So let's get into the last part of qualifying. And we can just see at the moment, Burl for uh, Kaz is... In second position at the moment. Might just have basically have a quick little look actually at the uh, entry list. Might be easier so we can all see. So there's 12 in each group representing GTL and CAS for a total 24 car on the grid. So we've got Christopher Razor in the BMW with Stu in a BMW for GTL. Gunway 180, who's at the moment the fastest in the Nissan GTR. The Bloody Nine and John Slow also in Nissan. In the McLarens, we've got Max Power and Cuckoo. And Mark 860 and Rangy Rover in the Mercedes. In the Porsches, we've got Mac Attack, Brett S and Carl. So that's for all the GTL guys. With the Cas, we've got Chris the Frenchy one in the BMW and Tactical Nuclear Pingu. Also in the BMW, in the Mercedes, we have Volkov 15, uh, Red Nose 58, Heel Toe Hero is also in the Mercedes. In the BMW, um, the Tactical Nickel Pingu, and oh, we've already went through that. The Porsche is actually Theo Loop and Chinese Food and Dan Dander in, in the Porsches. And in the Nissans, we got Burl, who's chasing in pole position at the moment with John Johns 01, and then in the McLaren, Jeff Hooten and HDSTN. So let's have a look. So Bell's in the pits coming back out, but at the moment it is gun 180 on pole with the last three minutes remaining. Not much longer in this qualifying session. John Slow for Gravel Trap Legends, currently in third position. And then we've got the Loop, who's actually in pit lane at the moment. He's comfortable there in fourth position. Chinese Food is um, in the fifth position. Don't mind me, I'm just uh, at the same time, just getting a few things organised for the, ch the end results of this qualifying. hope you enjoy this race it's going to be a crack of a race as we're looking at red no so the at the moment the cas guys are doing pretty good in qualifying they, they've got a number of cars they've got four cars so far in the top six um, and only two of the gtl guys in that position as we got a big 90 minute race though so at the end of the day being in the top 10 is a good way to start this 90 minute race big field of 24 And there's not too many more cars on the grid. If I bring up the map there, there's a few cars, a lot in pit lane at the moment. We're just seeing, we'll go on to the Burl. We'll watch him. Maybe have a good look on, on board as he's really challenging to see if he can get uh, the pole position. He's got about 0.4 of a second. He'll probably be aiming for that half a second if he can to guarantee that pole position over gun 180.
What's he got? He's going to get another lap in. And this, I believe, was his outlap. So let's have a look at his sectors as he goes through. It should come up so we can see if he's up. Oh, that's not going to um, do him any good as he's returned back to the pits. Uh, we'll go on Red Nose. Maybe we'll have a look at uh, Brett S. We know he can be pretty fast with Gravel Trap Legends and see if he can knock over Red Nose, who's currently in sixth position. There we go with our qualifying order. I probably will just try and get us a, we'll get the order up there so it's a little bit easier for everyone shortly with the CAS, but while they're getting themselves ready, you can see foggy skies here at the moment. And if you just bear with me while I just try and get a graphic up very shortly for us all. So we can just see how they all go as the uh, individual league runners. So they're going to have their formation lap as well. So we've got a little bit of time, guys. Um, don't have all the mod cons here with the uh, streaming, but we're doing a good job. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy the racing here this evening. I've seen this beautiful Wisconsin area of uh, the northern part of America. And uh, I think it's Elkhart El El Lake or something very close by. So I might just pause for a bit as I uh, just get the new graphic coming up.
Sorry, you wouldn't have had any sound then, I don't think, of those cars then. So hopefully you're getting some now. Just don't worry about those top things coming on there at the moment. They're, they're just doing their formation lap. shortly we'll go straight to the live action should have the qualifying order there now and as you can see we have Gunner 180 was on pole with Burl from Kaz John Slow in third for GTL and then we've got three Kaz drives from fourth to sixth the Theo the Loop Chinese Food Red Nose 58 in the Mercedes Brett S in the Porsche in seventh in the Bloody Nine in the Nissan Peel Toe Hero in for Kaz in the Mercedes AMG with Chris the Frenchy one in 10th uh, position. So that's your top 10. We have already the uh, one, one point, you could say, well, there's no points, but there's six there of the Kaz guys compared to the four of the GTL. Christopher Razor in 11th position. Jonks in 12th with Tactical Nuclear in 13th for Kaz. Rangy Rover uh, in the... Mercedes AMG in 14th with Cuckoo beside him in 15th. Volkov in 16th. Mac Attack in 17th. Dan Durin for Kaz with Jeff Hunton and HDSTN for Kaz Racing. Rounding out the top 20. Then the last four will be Mark 860, Carl Stew and Max Power for GTL. So here we go guys, you can comment if you want for who you're barracking for, let us know who you want to see and I'll make sure we get some screen time for them and you can see those liveries we've got for the GTL guys, the blue car so they're easily identified and then the day glow orange and going to a maroon pinky colour at the back of some of these cars for the Kaz guys. So the drivers are definitely starting to try and warm up their tyres as they get these cars ready. We'll bring up the map so you can see where they are. They're coming up to the final corner. They'll form up two by two. And we've already got Nomad, Kaz all the way. So you can see there's a big mixture there. But as we said, there's six Kaz guys in the top ten. And there is... Only the four of the GTL guys in the top 10 of the blue cars. And here we go. And we've got the competitor, the, the fans after Burl. They want to see Burl have a good start. He's on the outside. And look at this thick fog, the headlights on. And it's very identifiable to see as Burl has a look down and defends that second position from John Slow. As they all get through turn one, they're all going to filter through. It looks like they're all getting through nicely, but back up front it is Gunner taking it down turn two. Don't worry about that blue dot, guys. That is the safety car. And a dandy evil. Yes, babe, but Bert's your babe. So here we go. Let's make sure that he stays safe out there with John Slow defending in third position from Theo. And uh, Theo is having a little look, seeing if he can have a sneaky look up here underneath the, the bridge, which is a uh, very uh, hard place to overtake. Got to look for track limits here in this part of the circuit. And what a great camera angle that is as they come on through up the top part of the hill before they drop down into this tight left-hand corner before they go through the big carousel. 
This is where the tyres will get a big punishment as the sun starts to come up. 6 a.m. in game time. And it's real time as well. So once we reach this uh, 30 minutes remaining of this race, it will be 7 o'clock in the morning. But it looks like gun 180 gets through from the back straights very hard. Sometimes cars can run a little bit wide through that kink and this very tight, hard on the brakes into this final part of the circuit in the final sector. There's a little bit of an incident which would have been from down also in the kink that I was talking about. And we got Volkov pointing the wrong way. And there's a bumper bar left back there behind of a GTL car. So there's evidence there between these drivers. So they will be in for an early pit stop. The safety car has not come out. It's sitting there in pit lane. Oh, what have I done there? Cancel, we don't want to quit out. Don't get too trigger happy, ain't he? Now look at Christopher Razor putting some pressure on the Frenchy one. Obviously, Chris, the Frenchy one. There must be a few Chris's in Kaz, but this, uh, this Chris is the Frenchy one as he runs wide as uh, Christopher. So there's a couple of Chris's battling now. One is an Aussie and the other one is the Frenchy one, but the, the Aussie has caught, got out on top at this stage, getting into the top 10. Now let's go back up to the front here as some of the cars are coming into pit lane. They would have been hoping for that safety car to come out. Obviously, they got going. Our Frenchy Canadian alien. There you go. So let's see. We'll keep an eye on him when we start hearing people commenting about the alien drivers. Gunner 180, you could say, is an alien. And uh, obviously, the baby of Burl. It's a lot of love for Burl on the stream. And uh, maybe he's an alien as well. We don't like to call them aliens, though. They're not a green, early-eyed people. I think they're just super fast and do good what they do. But look at this train. Look at the, the mid-pack here. We have got a four-way train of the Kaz cars, all dining in luxury in the, in the restaurant carriages of this train. And it is uh, Theo that's leading that train. Oh, what a great view that is. You just need to keep trying to pick on cars so you can keep on that view. Oh, I just love it. Look at it. We need more of it. But it, uh, here we go for the start of lap three. And we, uh, we did say lap four because they did do their formation lap, which was counted as a lap. So... Uh, we will keep up with what they're saying, which will be lap four. That'd be fair enough. So they're on to their fourth lap, third racing lap. And look at this battle here between the Kaz guys. We got the Porsche of Chinese food trying to do a hot delivery. And uh, Red Nose sticking it with him in the Mercedes and towing along heel tow hero behind as well. So the Kaz guys are doing a great job, but Chinese food just losing touch of Theo at this stage. But we've still got those 24 drivers going. So just a reminder too, with this uh, inter-club um, challenge, an annual event, which hopefully it'll continue on. It's a great format. Uh, that goes down one point from first, at 24 points for first, all the way down to 24 with a one point margin between the places. So you really want to try and finish the race, give your team vital points, even if it's just that one point, it could be the deciding point that your league needs. And uh, will it be our northern neighbours uh, celebrating and spraying the champagne again for the second time year in a row, or can us Southerners finally reach that top step and uh, get our numbers that we require up a little bit in the pointy end? But at the moment, cars are driving a very, very good race indeed. Let's have a little look at this uh, little battle down here between the Frenchy one and uh, Christopher Razor. He's not happy to see the other, the Aussie uh, Chris 
in front of him and he's all he's seen is blue in front of him he's seen obviously the bloody nine and also brett s so he's seen the three blue cars in front and i'll tell you what he uh, won't want a lot he won't like to see that the fast french canadian by billow and flames billow and out of the twin exhaust on both sides of this bmw m6 this fog is uh really sticking around uh obviously the the, for the forecast is for the those overcast skies but we're early in the morning so we may not even see the uh the skies if this fog hangs around in this area of Wisconsin you will get to know that I do get a little bit tongue twisted uh, with some of the words and this is one lesson to all you young tackers make sure you stay at school and enjoy your English language it uh, can be boring at times but I tell you what nothing better than being able to pronounce all the world of your of your dictionary and uh turn one can be tricky yes track limits as well running wide definitely um they can definitely run wide there but the game sometimes can be a little bit uh, uh lenient on that and there's a little good battle here but for uh, another one of the uh, cas drivers seen blue in front of him of uh, carl the, the feisty feisty uh Gravel Trap Legends or Oz and Z driver. Just having a nice little sip of cup of tea. A couple of the drivers that obviously got caught in the incident. Uh, Mac Attack, and you can still see him fairly damaged in that car. And we had Jeff Hooten, one of the Kaz drivers point the wrong way. I think it might have been Volkov that we saw point the wrong way, actually turning it back around. And he's on the comeback trail. And he wouldn't be too happy uh, um, about that either. As he qualified in 16th, so all the way down to 22nd, dropping already six positions from being involved in that incident. Max Power, he, hasn't, he must have just got tangled up a little bit but escaped a lot of damage, been 21st. And Stu was another driver that, uh, don't know if he got away with it, but he's running with a pack of the drivers coming back on through. But he's, uh, at the moment, he's just got a car that he's uh, behind at the moment with one of the uh, Kaz crew. I think that might be, uh, yes it is, it's uh, Jeff. He's a, I think he's a, actually would lap down on actually on on Stu. So he was in the pits for a long, long time. But back up front, it's starting to get a little bit close again. Bill, uh, he's closed that gap. It was over a second, and he's slowly bringing it back in. Now tyre wear is at authentic as well. Damage is set at 100%, so real time type of damage. And as they come up into the last part of the circuit, onto this big long straight, they gotta get up the hill, it's very important to get that power on. Get up on top of the hill here, and this can be a very tricky part of the circuit. Let's just see on board, and you can just see if these if these braking mar markers get uh, knocked out in any way, you've got to have some reference points, like that bit of road that you saw that come on. Count the number before you would probably hit the brakes in seconds. It might only be one second before you'd hit the brake. So these are the little reference points these drivers need to think about in endurance races. When you come to sprint races, sometimes you don't have to worry about it because a 20 minutes or, or 30 minute race Sometimes the, a lot of these braking markers and different things may stay there on the circuit, but in an endurance race, when it gets a little bit longer, a little bit tighter, it takes a car just to nip one of those, and they're gone. And here we go, what a great circuit this is. 
six and a half kilometres of pure driver enjoyment and the undulations as you can see just make for a great racing experience you can hot lap this track just endlessly there's always a challenge 14 corners to try and perfect and uh, it's not easy Uh, Gunner's in the Nissan GTR, so we've got Burl in the same car just behind him and John Slow. So the three Nissans, uh, one, two, and three. And then Theo uh, qualified in fourth, still in fourth in the Porsche. So the leading of the Porsche and Chinese food also in a Porsche. See, the top six are actually just how they qualified. So it's uh, going pretty good. Red Nose in sixth position in the Mercedes, the first of the AMGs just see this sun wants to come out when this fog lifts looks like it's actually the overclass skies um, aren't there because you can just see the sun trying to break through from this thick fog but we could have clear skies ladies and gentlemen as this fog lifts so there you were on board gunner almost his fastest lap of the race only a uh, cat's whisker off his fastest time and uh, Burl would have been doing his same because he has actually hasn't lost or gained any time. He's actually very fast coming down the hill. Well, in the uh, Nissan. And what have we got? We've almost we've just gone through the first 15 minutes of the race. We're on lap eight, and we're probably looking around about maybe 38 laps, 39 laps for this race for an hour and a half. Yeah, that's it. The Nissans are looking good. They haven't shown much love previously in AMS2, but obviously with the new updates, maybe the Nissans are a little bit more, um, got a little bit more boost or a little bit more to go for. But this flowing circuit is probably really helping the Nissans as well. But let's not also count out uh, the Porsche. We've seen the Porsche not be pretty fast. And Theo is uh, just keeping ahead of the Chinese food delivery man. Bit of fried rice coming your way on Victory Lane if he can get it up into the top three. Who would everyone would love a little bit of Chinese food to celebrate? Thanks Nomad. Great comment there mate. Yeah so just a little background for myself. I haven't touched AMS2 for some time. I've just recovering from a back surgery, so I'm being chumping at the bit, you could say, to really give this game another go. I loved it. all the other versions that I've been playing for the last oh, nine, probably close to a year, probably ten months uh, since I've been playing AMS2. Came from the Xbox console days playing Project Cars 2, so as we all know, this is a pretty good transition from those Project Cars days as we're just trying to pick up a car coming on through here we'll pick up on the roof of the Frenchy one it's just not quite picking up the cameras here at the moment so well, let's go on Rangy Rover you may just see with Rangy Rover if we can get on trackside and it might pick him up you can see him in the grey Oz NZ so this all came about back in the day Oz NZ uh, with a bigger league uh, member active membership Obviously, started to have these inter-club battles with Kaz. I think it was N-A-R-R N -A -R -R back in the day. And, uh, yeah, I, I definitely know, Matt. I will be recovering in next inter-club race. You watch out, I'll be there. Woody Lizard, keep an eye. But uh, Rangy Rover, he's uh, the org basically grip organiser of Oz, Oz NZ. And, unfortunately, the membership is slowly dwindled down, more combining with Gravel Trap Legends, so I wouldn't say dwindled, uh, combining the Gravel Trap Legends, and uh, now we've got a uh, really good league here in Australia and New Zealand that's run on Monday and Wednesday nights uh, for all the AMS2 uh, sim races for Australia and New Zealand. So he's the lone silver car, but he's still registered as a GTL participant. So he will be scoring points for 
the Gravel Trap Legends crew. So 12v12, he's still got 12 running. And uh, yeah, we're gonna just see how things go. Now HDSTN in 18th position in the McLaren. And he's trying to see if this 720S can get up the grid a little bit more as he goes right around this carousel. Gun 180, thanks for picking up Ian Pitts. And there's evidence there, there is damage as he's making his way back to the pits. So we've seen, obviously we haven't seen, we can't go back to see what happened there. But that's also given John Slow the lead. So where is also Burl? Burl as well, can we pick up him? As it may be him also, Burl may have got some damage. As he's following, so not so much visual damage, but he's coming in the pit, so maybe he's finding that they may have got tangled up and he's doing it under respect to Gunner and getting an eye out of his pit stop as well. Fill up the fuel tank because it should get to the end of the race with a full fuel tank. Um, so, yeah, definitely an incident between them, but I would say that Burl has got some damage, lingering damage there. It definitely looks at the front. So he'll be getting some aero change, maybe a front uh, spoiler. And when he's in cockpit there, look at him, he's, he's waiting for these pit crew. And I believe these are the, the new pit crew as well uh, in AMS 2. They got them era Pacific. So if, if we're in an uh, older uh, vintage car, the, the pit crew will look a little bit older without helmets. And uh, maybe just some e a cap and a... Uh, and some headphones or something like that, earmuffs. That yeah, sitting there waiting. It can just it feels like a lifetime. And I think that this is definitely what Bell has done. This is great sportsmanship between both. Oh, I'd say from Kaz, and uh, we applaud that because he was ready to go and he was just waiting for Gunner. He knew what he did. So credit to Kaz and. This is something that they may do, if uh, any of the viewers there from Kaz, this is maybe something they do in their league. Um, when they find a redress isn't enough, um, that the, the, the actual damage car has to go in the pits. They may follow that car in the pits and wait for that repair. So, oh, that's a that's a great um, little rule that if that's what they do. And uh, it's a good one that most leagues may want to follow because, yeah, if, the, if you know you're at fault and you're redressing, but that other car has to go in the pits, they lose out a lot more and you can continue on then so credit to the Kaz crew now that brings Chinese food into third position so we could have fried rice at the end of these celebrations a bit of Mongolian lamb or the old honey chicken or, or something like that salt and pepper prawns what's the dish over there over in in uh, northern in, over in America and in Canada when they go to the Chinese food if they do what's the favorite dish a lot of us in Aussies, we like the uh, rainbow steak or the, yeah, the fried rice, satay chicken. Let us know. Do you like an omelette? Do you like the old Chinese omelette? So look at this. We've got in second, Kaz. Third, we'll, we'll go through. We've got, uh, we've got GTO in first position. With John Slow, the loop, oh the loop, Theo, sorry, in second position. And we're waiting to find out what you like to eat in Chinese food. If you go to for Chinese takeout or sit down, what do you order? And uh, in third position for Kaz, another Kaz car of the red nose in the uh, big burly Mercedes AMG. Doesn't that sound great? Might just stay on this battle. Orange chicken is the way to go. Yes, that sounds like it might be a bit of a sticky tangy type sauce on top of that chicken. That would be very nice. I'm getting hungry as we speak. And uh, Heel Toe Hero, who's we're watching at the moment. I mean, Red Nose, we're watching. Heel Toe Hero is just behind these guys. He's another Kaz guy. And then we've got some GTL guys after that with Brett S, Christopher, and the Bloody Nine. But at this stage, at this stage, we've got obviously a lot of Kaz guys up in the top 10. And uh, Andan Devil has got the bourbon chicken. 
I tell you what, I, I think your uh, your better half might be wanting a bit of bourbon as we speak, as he wouldn't have been happy uh, in second. Now all the way into 21st, a big comeback drive we're expecting from these two. They've been fast. And uh, let's have a look. Um, Sandong roast chicken. Now that sounds very interesting as well. Oh, Normat, oh, Normat, cook it yourself. Yeah, you can. Yeah, definitely. It does taste, oh, it's always better when you cook it yourself. You've got a smile on your dial when you, your, uh, your friends are enjoying a little bit of your own homemade Chinese. Get it the wok going. There's uh, the Frenchy one. He'd probably be all more into the, the, uh, the more delicate type of food. French Canadians, I'm not too sure if they're still that, that French style, which is beautiful food too. And then you just got Brett S, who probably put a little big lump of steak on the barbie, you know? The Aussie way, just put it on the barbecue, put a big thing of steak on, maybe some prawns as well. He's in sixth position at the moment. He's not too far away from Red Nose and I mean from Hill Toe Hero. Uh, as one of the other GTL guys moving slow in a McLaren. Oh yeah, Balut. Uh, Balut. 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 I don't know. French delicacy. Yeah, I want to find out about that. Tell you what, we don't mind. French in the Haynes family. Now the gravel trap legend himself, uh, Stu, he finds himself in 18th position. <laughs> okay, no, I don't want to know about it. Fair enough. Okay, so Stu is uh, in 18th position. And what's he got there? Cole is driver in front, just about 10 seconds in front. So he's a bit in a no man's land. He's got Volkov behind him about the same distance roughly. So keeping it easy and uh, just letting this race come to Stu. Maybe trying to fight for a top, oh, I don't know, let's see, top 12 maybe if he can. He's a little bit off the pace that previous lap of 211, but Cole did a 219 as well. A bad lap from Cole. So that's why probably we've seen him bridge that gap a little bit. Just see how they go. Carl's up the road, so here he is now. Sorry, the cameras on AMS2 have changed a little bit. Sometimes not working as good as they can be, but he's coming up over the starting strip. Let's see, he did a 209 previously, and he's just done a 209, so 10 seconds faster than his previous lap, so obviously he had made a mistake. And let's just have a look to see what Stu's doing on this lap. It's around the same, it's about the same. So. Stu doesn't, doesn't have the pace at the moment as the leading uh, top 16. So if he can get up in the 16, he'd be happy. But if not, you know, any position, as we said, points will mean a lot for this inter-club battle. Now, Burles, finding a little bit hard. He's got a driver in front of him and Gunner. As uh, Gunner's making his way through the pack, so he's got through Volkov, who we're just watching here for a Kaz in the Mercedes AMG. And it won't be long till Burl will be behind him wanting to get on through, so the Kaz guys will have to work together because they want to keep Burl in contention with Gunner, really. These guys will not have to pit again in this race where everyone else has to. So don't count these guys off. The uh, time that they had in the pit lane for damage repair, they, they can more than likely make that up in just raw pace. So, these guys will be, Gunner and Burl, in my prediction, with an hour to go, will be really fighting to maybe nudge into this top three. If they can't, like, it's gonna be hard, but, you know, let's, let's give them a little bit of leeway and say the top five. What do you guys think? Will Gunner and Burl find themselves in the top five by the end of the race, thinking, that all the guys in front of them have to pit yet. So, with 30 minutes down, we've got John Slow from Kaz, Lee, I mean from GTL, 
leading the way. Yeah, no mate, I think that will be a given. We hopefully they will get in the top 10 and they hopefully they don't have to stop again, Nomad, because they did come in with a pit where they're gonna have to do around about, I think about 65 minutes. Yeah, exactly, without another splash. So 65 minutes around this circle, which is a lot of open throttle as we know. So they will be using quite a bit of fuel. Not too sure how the Nissans go with the fuel, so that could be the telling factor. That's where the Porsche may come into it of Theo and also Chinese food. So they could actually, uh, they may find themselves, not that it really matters too much in the game, but they may not be pitting as long for fuel compared to the Nissan of John Slow in front. So we've got the Kaz drivers coming on through at the hour mark, at the um, half an hour mark into the race with an hour to go. In second and third for Chinese food and Red Nose in the Mercedes in fourth. Then we've got the heel and toe in fifth. So we've got four cars in the top five, all Kaz drivers. So again, like they did in Bathurst, you saw previously, what happened last year and we can just probably I'll just show that up quickly we can see the results from last year and you can see that uh, Gunner won the race but the top uh, then there were six cars after that getting valuable points to really boost Kaz up in that standing until we got to eighth position for Mac Attack for Gravel Trap Legend and they were in the Super V8s for the uh, Bathurst race so there you go, that was uh, what happened last year. So it's already Kaz 1-0 in the uh, new form up in Gravel Trap Legends being included in this inner class battle. So we'll, we'll say this is version 2. Some of the NARR crew will probably say it's version 3. I'm not too sure what happened the first time or the other times that they used to race with OzNZ. If any of you guys from NARR NAR are watching, and I, uh, 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 please let me know what happened back in the day. So we know, did uh, ANZ, OzNZ uh, take any victories or was it always uh, the Americans that uh, were a lot more dominant? And Heel and Toe Hero is obviously on some nice pace now as the fuel dropping. He is on his fastest lap at this stage, if he can continue this on. As he's coming up onto the final corner, turn 14. Okay, so that must have been a group C at Nordschleife. That must have been the one previous before Bathurst, so back in 2021 maybe. So there you go, it was his fastest lap, so he'll Heel Toe Hero is now trying to see if he can get a little bit closer to Red Nose. He can probably just see him. Let's go on cockpit. And uh, sorry about the audio. Sometimes it comes in and out when we go on board. Hopefully AMS2 can fix that in later updates. But you can see he. this is uh, like dangling um, the carrot in front of the rabbit. Uh, you can see his competitors up in front. He's also got Brett not too far behind, just within a second. So, but he has been fast, just at first sector, just a little bit slow, but he could be find a little bit more pace in this Mercedes in this part where the horsepower really helps him. Maybe he's got this car balanced. He can make up a lot of time, definitely through the carousel. A lot of throttle through that kink. Now this corner's vital to get right. You don't want to get too wide here because you want to get that power on. Get back over as he's doing to the left-hand side and really try and really just use his steering and the throttle angle, getting it right and hit this corner to get a good run. Let's see how much of a lift he has through the kink. No lift at all. Full noise right through the kink here in the AMG Mercedes as he's lost a little bit of time through sector two. Here we go, hard on the brakes. And you can see that sun trying to get through this fog. Will the fog lift before the end of this race? 
The drivers are probably, they, they told us during the qualifying that the track temperatures were around about 50 degrees uh, Celsius. That's not Fahrenheit, that's Celsius. So i um, not too sure what that would be in Fahrenheit, probably over 100 and something plus. But here we go, up we go, up over the hill, over the starting strip. Wasn't as fast as his previous lap, but still pretty good. He made up time in that third sector. So there you go. On board heel toe hero, but he's got Brett S just behind him for Gravel Trap Legends in the Porsche. Now, heel toe hero actually qualified in ninth position, so up four positions from the qualifying. So, well done to heel toe and hero. Obviously, gained those two positions from Gunner and Burl when they had a little coming together, which we unfortunately didn't see. We've already talked about a uh, big credit to the CAS crew where Burl just ha held in pit lane waiting for the repairs of Gun 180 to happen before he got going. So they can resume their battle and their chase up the pack. So we've got a... Uh, We've got a pick up by, I forget who it was again, who mentioned the top 10 for both Burl and uh, Gunner. Gunner's up into 17th at the moment. 203.2. That previous lap around from Gunner, absolutely flying. This camera here just doesn't seem to like to get hold of the car. So we'll get on to uh, Dan Dadarian that we haven't actually seen much of in the Porsche in, the, in uh, 14th position. But let's bring up some timings here. We'll quickly go through and have a little look to see what their best time is. We'll go a, bit, a little bit slow, as you can see in the background what's going on there with uh, Dan at the moment. But John Slow with the best of a 203.5 with Theo then with a 203.9 um, in that Porsche. So, you know, the, the Porsches have uh, uh, got some pace uh, over the uh, with the with alongside the Nissan. And then we got Red Nose in... Uh, third position at the moment with a 203.988. Now he's in that Mercedes that we have. We just love the sound of the Mercedes, don't we? So he's there. As uh, Theo the Loop is actually going down the order. What's going on there? Let's uh, quickly get away from this uh, track side. I don't know if we can get to the Theo. Oh, he's in the pits. So he's taking a mandatory stop. I'll just get the timings out of the way. So he's coming for a pit stop. So he's getting his stop done as none of these cars can get through 90 minutes without the pit stop so it's not a compulsory pit stop but obviously they need to take one to get to the end so depending how much fuel they're going to need will be the telling factor and they'll all obviously get new tyres put on these cars but let's just quickly go back on to um yeah Burl he's just he's obviously in a little bit of traffic he's getting through as well 206 so that's uh, Volkov, who he was slowly catching. So maybe it was just because he was getting involved with a little bit of traffic, and he also had Carl maybe in the um, in the Porsche behind. So he might have got involved a little bit there, getting through. But what's he got? His own nine, six, about ten seconds behind. So yeah, he's dropped a bit of time from Gunner. Everything looks fairly straight on his car. So uh, yeah, could be behind some of those back markers. Everyone's doing a good job there. And um, so let's just have a quick look there. We've got, so we're trying to see who's the fastest time at the moment. 203.4 is the fastest from John Slow. So let's just quickly go through as we go through some of these guys. A lot of 204, so this is hot competition. When you've got mid packs doing mid to the low 204s. Um, Theo, the loop 203. Point um, nine, so not quite the fastest. That lap that we saw with Gun 180, 203.239, I think we might have been on board. That is the fastest time um, from him, but Burl, not too fast. It'd be interesting to see what lap time he, when he did that. That could have been when he was actually following Gunner, because that was a pretty good time. So, Burl's probably got the second fastest time. So, the top three fastest times uh, from the Nissans, and then after that, we've got the um, Porsche of Chinese food as he's now getting through some lap traffic.
and making it nice and clean. That corner, turn three, can be a very challenging corner as you come down a long, the long straight out of turn two. And as you can see, turn four out of there, you can get quite a little bit of track there without worrying about uh, track limits, but you've got to be careful. It's 90 degrees. This is probably one of the hardest corners, in my opinion, um, before you come into the, the carousel. A really uh, good overtaking opportunity in and out of that corner. As the car's just behind. Getting through the lap traffic uh, of Red Nose. He's coming on through. And that was Stu that was just behind him that they got past. I think it was. So Stu in 20th. Dropped a couple of positions. We did see him in 18th. But that's obviously Gunner and Burl have uh, gone on through. Oh, that view again. Sensational. Not long enough. Should be a static camera we can uh, choose. And one of the uh, Kaz guys coming on through in the Mercedes of Heel and Toe Hero. And here he comes in fourth position as Brett S goes into the pit lane. So one of the uh, faster of the GTL guys are uh, in. John Slow still out in front in the Nissan. But we have seen that the uh, the pace of the Porsche from Chinese food is fairly fast. And I think that he's actually closing that gap slightly. Yeah, it could be a bug, uh, Nomad. Hopefully it is. Hopefully it's not his hardware uh, engaging a little bit of brake, but it could be just a, a graphic that we're seeing on our screen. I did notice that earlier. Um, there's always a little bit of graphical things that happen sometimes on these live streams with AMS2. So, Brett S in the pit lane. Let's have a look to see where Gunner is. So... I think he's just moving out of pit lane Brett S now. So it's a long pit exit, entry and exit. You can just see now, 60 kilometers an hour as we saw earlier in the opening part of the broadcast. Now he's just coming out now and Gunner's coming on to the final corner. So the length of the front straight is a gap between him and Brett S. So that's a good gauge. I think Brett S was around about six position. So for us all that predicted that maybe he'll be in the top 10, I think you can say that Gunner and Burl will definitely be in the top 10. Now, can they get up on that podium? Or oh, top five, it'll be a great comeback drive from both these drivers if uh, they can find themselves in the top five. Uh, Mark 860, he's actually been Acknowledged with Gravel Trap Legends as a guy that's uh, come out and so he's been pretty much every race Gravel Trap Legends GTL have uh, done. We've seen Mark 860, so you'll see a lot more of Mark 860 with any international type racing. He's loving his sim racing on AMS2 and slowly getting better and better. As especially during series, you'll find that once he comes used to a particular car, he gets faster and faster, and you'll find him in the top five. And most of the league racing that GTL do have a minimum 20 on the grid. So when you find yourself mixing in the top five near the end of a series, you can just see that Mark comes uh, as one to the car as the series progresses. As we all know in real life, sometimes you don't have the time to practice every day or get used to it so he uses his time wisely and uh, learns the, the car on race night and learns more and more so a good driver can do that and I believe Mark 860 is definitely one of those drivers yeah, I wonder who that driver is just behind him. he's uh, obviously a car that's uh, behind a lap behind obviously wanting to come on through so we've got in a McLaren. Is it uh, Jeff Hooten? 
Yes, it is. It is Jeff Hooten. So, Jeff Hooten got some pace and mixing it with Mark 860. Wanting to try and see if he can get that lap back. We, I think that he was found, we found him actually uh, two laps down from that incident on lap one. So, qualified in 19th, Jeff did, but I think he's got more pace than what he's qualifying uh shows us, oh, that was a little bit wild on exit, but it looks like he's going to have to, uh, he'll get that move done, and I was just going to say that Mark 860 really needed to just let it go, knowing that he's actually uh, a lap behind, it's not for position. Uh, let him get through, he, he's obviously on the bit to try and um, get on through this field and make up some positions and get those points for Kaz. Currently only getting two points for Kaz in 23rd, so obviously he'll uh, want to try and creep up if he can up into the top 20, if he can. But he's already got a big deficit there. You can see on the blue chart here, if you can see my mouse, mouse pointer, uh, he's 3 minutes 17 off the leader. And with Carl, who is in 20th, he's 2 minutes 42. So make the, the difference there that he's roughly... 30 seconds behind, maybe a bit more from Carl, not much more than 30 seconds. So, yeah, so he's got a little bit of work to do, but lapping a lot faster than Carl. Carl keeps making a few mistakes with the uh, CAS, I mean, with the uh, GTL guys. He's been uh, fast and slow, so we saw that earlier where he, he'll do a He'll do a 208 probably the next lap around. So a bit of inconsistency. But uh, that's those things that you get. But uh, the bloody nine, right uh, behind Christopher Razor and just in front of this man in one of the Nissans. John Tikchu. John, I don't know what we'll call him. Just call him O1. Jonks. How about Jonks? Jonks is all right. We'll call him Jonks. And uh, Jonks is doing well in 7th position. Qualified in 12th. So holding his own. Up in 7th position. Running very wide on the turn, turn 12. I think it is. Don't have a, a uh, map in front of me. I'm just using the map that's up on the screen. Usually I do have a track map, map in front of me. Are we getting to a point where we're going to start seeing these drivers thinking about a pit stop if they're going to ha separate the 90 minute race in half? So we've gone sort of past that moment, but we're in that window. And we can see Red Nose is actually in the pit lane as we speak. So with a little bit of damage too, carrying a bit of damage is Red Nose. But he's on exit, I believe, or is he? No, he's coming on in. So he's going to have one of the last pit bays by the looks of things. So he hits his marks with a little bit of a brake lock-up. And uh, Burl's still losing time out on Gunner, unfortunately. He was 10 seconds behind last time we had a look. And he's... Now, oh, I just see Gunner. Gunner was, Gunner's just made a move actually on Mark. I think Mark 860 would have made that nice and easy for him. But uh, yeah, he's basically 15 seconds behind Gunner at this stage. So Red Nose should be, oh, he's about to leave pit lane. He's still stationary rears. He's probably getting that repair done. And Gunner's coming up through now, up over the hill. And so will Bell. Bell will probably get him as well. He's a long way away, but. Uh, Red Nose, looks like he's moving now. He's just coming out of pit lane now as uh, here we come. Burl, he's going to have the pace. Actually, Red Nose is already out. It's HDSTN that's uh, rolling out of pit lane or coming into pit lane. So he's made that position. So Red Nose is already into turn two, actually. Just behind Mark 860, who is yet still to pit. I think. Yes, he does. Mark 860 will have to pick still. And Red Nose doesn't want to lose time here, but they're still battling for position, even though Mark has to pit. 
still race on as Christopher Razor, last man from GTL, is in the pit lane as well. The telling factor is when we see the top three, when they pit, we'll be interested to see where they come out. I wouldn't think that it'll be too long before they start thinking about pitting. But one thing that the guys will have over Gunn and Burl is fresher tyres. They've uh, really been on these tyres an extra 20 minutes, or be 25 minutes roughly longer than these guys that are going to be pitting now. And this fog doesn't seem to want to lift here at Wisconsin. Oh, there's defending going on from Mark. Mark really wants to hold off. Red Nose, is, Red Nose has got his nose in front for a second, but then uh, has now dropped that as we get some lap, lap traffic as well. Oh, when over the camera it goes Mark 860. There's a new lens that uh, we're going to need. Oh, Woody Lizard crew. We'll have to get out a uh, little bit of fun in for a new camera, the track cam. I actually blinked. I don't know if you guys uh, blinked at the same time, but at that time I had to blink. It's, uh, I think Red Nose may get this move. He can get it around the outside or at least have that better uh, break in. Oh, it's just uh, Mark's just doing everything. He's uh, experienced Mark putting the car where he needs to. Uh, really sharp, but here we go, Red Nose. Oh, that was a bit cheeky from Mark 860. I did talk Mark 860 up about how he's a... Uh, a great driver there with Gravel Trap Legends. That won't take away that he's a great driver, but that was a little bit too much defensive driving by Mark. So just got to be careful there. But give credit to, we got to remember that there could be a little bit of lagging as well, because we do have that uh, sometimes happening as well. So that could also be a connection uh, little tag. But we did actually see Mark defending down the inside as well. So... I'd say that would be all on Mark, that little incident. But John Slow, here we go, in pit lane from the lead. As uh, the pit crew look like uh, they probably had a dose of Chinese food. They don't really want to do anything. They're a little bit lazy. Uh, those tyres are waiting to go on. But no, it's not going to go on. But they will go on, as we know. As here we go, Gunner has already gone through the carousel, through the fast kink. Now keep an eye on the blue, I mean the red dot, sorry. The blue dot's the safety car. But the red dot is just moving now out of pit lane. So here we go. So John Slow's moving out of pit lane. I love this angle as they come out, out of the pit zone. That's some great camera angles there. So John Slow, still the effective race leader now as he's come out in eighth position. And that's going to be a gauge where we can see all the other guys. There's all oh, one of the Gravel Trap Legends cars that spun out. Uh, probably one of these other cars down the order. Definitely not Boss Man Stu. He finds himself in that 20th spot still. And uh, we can see, as we said, those brake lights just uh, coming on and off. And... One of those things that maybe I will mention to him too, it was brought up to our attention, so I haven't seen it before. But uh, maybe some of his hardware, and that would be slowing him down a little bit without him even knowing if the brake is registering every now and then. So here we go, Chinese food. A lot of blue dots there. So you might be thinking, what are those blue dots? Well, those blue dots are the cars that will be a lap down uh, from Chinese food if he continues on the way he is by the end of the race. And that's also talking about, that's not taking into account the pit stops. So once we go through the pit stops, it'll show a better graphic. But at this stage, all the blue dots are a car that are a lap down. Uh, the red, um, the red, uh, red and white ones, uh, the cars are on the same lap as you, and then the solid red ones are the cars that are actually in front of you, like a lap in front. So if we go to, say for example, Stu, and we can just see the Porsche in front of him is a red solid dot on the track map, and that's actually a car 
that's uh, in front of him. Uh, actually, a lap in front. So it's a Porsche at the moment. And so would that be Chinese? I don't know if that's going to be Chinese food. No, it's not Chinese food, but it'll, it's one of the Porsches from the the Kaz guys. So let's have a look to see the other Porsches. Dan. Deary, I think. Or Theo. Well, probably be Theo more likely. Yeah, so it's Theo that was just in front of him. So if we go there, you can see the arrow now. So there's Stu. And uh, you can just have a look as he goes through the corner and comes out. We'll quickly switch over to Theo as he goes over the hill into the tight left-hander on top of the hill. So Theo's got a lot more red and white dots, as you can see he's a lot higher up. So those cars, as we said, are uh, the cars on the, on the same lap as him, as Chinese food comes into the pit lane. And then, uh, the, uh, yeah, so obviously there's no cars in front of him because he's on the lead lap. So the solid red dots are the cars that are on the, lead on the lap in front of you. So Chinese food comes past the Camaro safety car. Haven't seen that at all in the race. We thought we might have seen it on lap one with that incident, but we didn't. But uh, it's a good introduction to the game, having the safety car actually visual if a full course yellow comes out but still we find that it's a little bit hit and miss as it always has been so we've got Chinese food and the French one coming out oh no the French one's coming in sorry the Chinese food is going out and after the pit stop there we got that graphical bug where they just haven't released the car onto the ground so unfortunately that's a little bit of a problem and as the Frenchy one comes on in. So we're gonna have a hovercraft for Chinese food. Now, John Slow. So that's a big talking point actually. Chinese food has come out in front of John Slow. So he must be double stinting these tires. So maybe that's why he's a, he's a hovercraft now because he doesn't want any more tire wear on his car. But Chinese food is effectively the race leader. So here we go, German hovercraft engine and here, and I think more Chinese uh, engineering here with a mixture of German. I'll, I won't take that away from you, Nomad, but man, we could have our, uh, our Chinese delivered in record pace in any time soon. He's going that fast, he's still kicking up dirt. Uh, we'll try not to watch him too much because it does uh, play on your mind when you're watching it. But at the moment, John Slow was the leader of the race. And uh, and I think he had about, correct me if I'm wrong, I think it was about an eight second margin on Chinese food. So he has now got a margin of around about 11 second lead, Chinese food. So he's gained himself about 20 seconds. So that's probably what the tyres would have taken, all four. So he's gone the gamble. Will it pay off? Are we going to see more of the Kaz crew do it? Or will the bloody nine, has anyone mentioned it to him maybe? They're all in voice chat, but would anyone that sneakily have maybe have seen, would have John Slow maybe have seen that and told in open comms so the GTL guys know that uh, the Kaz guys may be going double stinting tyres. And John Slow is one of the drivers that tried his hardest when originally he thought it might have been two times tyre wear um, to work on it to see if the tyres would last the full 90 minutes without pitting. Uh, well, only for fuel only. So, But he opted for tyre, for the tyres, John Slow. Whereas Chinese Food may have just found that the Porsche could do the 90 minutes even with double tyre wear. And once it's gone to the... Uh, uh, authentic tyre wear, but well hey, these tyres are going to last. Now this could be a strategic genius call from Chinese food and will we see some of the other Kaz guys doing the same thing? Now we know Theo was pitted and he's also in a Porsche, but I think he actually stopped four tyres. Maybe maybe he didn't because he's in front of John Slow as well. So these things have just missed our attention 
Oh, look at the attitude of the Porsche. He's pushing hard. For half an hour to go of this race, there's been quite a little bit of action. Just to recap, we've had a probably a three-car, four-car incident. Turn one, uh, or turn one, for lap one. Uh, just through this kink that we're about to come to now, the fast right-hand kink on this, um, well, it's not really a straight, but through here, there was a bit of an incident on exit uh, involving a couple of the CAS cars and the GTL cars, which forced them to pit. We saw Gunner uh, stretch his lead out to about one and a half seconds to uh, Burl, and then Burl then started to find some extra pace in his Nissan and started to come up. Oh, as a back marker lost his front spoiler, he's uh, trying to get back to the pit lane and Burl got through there without incident, luckily. Uh, but Burl was uh, then bridged that gap. We, he brought that gap back down to within about 0.6 of a second. And we started viewing some other battles mid-pack and we missed what happened. But we believe that maybe Burl... Uh, maybe went for a dive or something happened between him and Gunner, which then saw those cars come into pit lane for damage repair around uh, the hour five, hour six to go mark. And then these guys are going to see if they can get to the end without pitting again with fuel. So they both pitted and we've already discussed Burl. He was ready to go out of pit lane, but he waited until Gunner was done. So that shows us that maybe it was a little bit of a mistake from Burl trying to make an overtake on this man, Gun 180. He was in ninth position now. It's still lapping at 203.996 at the moment. Fastest man last lap around was Chinese food in the Porsche. And don't forget, this uh, Gunner's got about a uh, 30 minute more use of tyres. I actually know who actually have fresher tyres because we know Chinese food didn't put tyres on. So keep an eye on Gunner as well, making er late positions on the Kaz guys that are double stinning their tyres. We know Theo is uh, obviously Chinese food is doing the same thing. Uh, but Chinese food with a 203.7 on, on double stinted tyres. That's, uh, and full load of fuel as well. Maybe not full load, just enough to get to the end. Um, so yeah, he's definitely flying at the moment. So, Cuckoo. Not 100% sure if we've seen him pit yet. He did qualify back in 15th, so one would think that he's yet to pit. But he could be pitting just for a splash and dash as well. Yeah, exactly. They will be running lower on fuel, um, but one would maybe think that maybe they've got the same amount of fuel load roughly, If because uh, I'd say Gunner would be almost on fumes at the end of the race. Um, and I think Chinese food, if he's been smart enough to double sit the tyres, I reckon he's got his fuel numbers correct too, and he'll probably be running over the finish line with one litre of fuel as well. So. Uh, the Porsche will probably have less fuel because it's, I don't think the tank's as much as the, as the Nissan's. But let's not count out the Nissan of John Slow at the moment with fresher tyres and 11 second, 12 second margin. He's under 203.375. Almost, we've seen the fastest lap is a 203.2. .2. I think it is of this race at the moment, the best lap was from Gunner, we saw a 202.7, we didn't catch that. Um, so there you go, Gunner in a 202. Um, that's the fastest lap of the race, a 202. No one else has reached the 202 margin, looking at that. So, wow. Just shows you the pace from some of these cars that got caught up in the incident. But we saw them pit earlier. We've seen, obviously, some of the other drivers pit a little bit earlier too and just doing their strategy call. But that's the talking point. Uh, Theo and Chinese Food double stinting their tyres in the Porsche. So will this be a masterclass from these two and a great strategy call or will they get run down? There's still a long way to go in this race. 25 minutes, just over. I don't think there was one, there's no extra lap after, there's no after the time, so once the time is out, that's it. That'll be the last lap. So the hero in that nice sounding Mercedes has uh, pitted in. 
getting his stop done. He shouldn't be there for too long. Let's see if he's doing tyres. We know the tyres will probably take about that 20 second margin. So if they drop him before the 25 minutes remaining, it could be just the fuel, but I think that he's probably going to find that he's actually getting tyres done as well. So tyres and fuel around 30 seconds? No. So there he is. So this could be a reason why we can see if the tyres will change or not. He's, still, he's got the hovercraft going as well. Ah, oh, he's back down. They decided to drop him. So there you go. So, And the loop, as we can see, he's full foot high, uh, wheels down. But here we go. The race leader now. Chinese food. Next time round, he's going to have the one to his name. So he's going to finally take the uh, lead of this race officially. This time around, if he can make sure he gets through here without having a, any sort of moment. I think the best thing to do when he's uh, hovering is uh, let's go on board. Oh, look at the closing gap he's got. He's had a little tag to one of the uh, GTL guys. No love lost there. I'll tell you what, the fists are out. The lap traffic. Even though he's got the hovercraft going. So, aggressive driving by Chinese food. That closing gap to the, the slower blue GTL car was intense. I can see why he just tagged him. If he tried to brake at that point, he was already turning in. And uh, the Porsche, as you know, when you brake with the rear engine at the, uh, the, the heavy weight at the back. Yeah, true net code. I keep from forgetting about the uh, the, def, the the ping rates. So that could have been that. But I did hear a little bit of a, a rub in my ear on my uh, headpiece. But all is well. And it hasn't slowed uh, Chinese food. He's absolutely flying. Just been on board. You can just see how aggressive he's been driving this lap through the lap traffic. Up over the hill. What's this time going to be that he's going to do? The last one was a 203.8. Is he going to better that or been in lap traffic? It would have been a little bit slower. Yes, 205.3. But that car is showing some pace, definitely. Let's go down and have a look at uh, Mac Attack. This might have been well, the McLaren that we saw as he comes in, although it's a Porsche actually, coming into pit lane. So I don't know if he was the offending car there that we saw, but he's coming in and he's, uh, Mac Attack's had a rough race by the looks of thing. And Gunner's in pit lane, so he hasn't been able to get to the end of the race without fuel. So that Nissan has been chewing up the fuel. And he knows he's not going to get to the end. So what's this? what does this mean for Burl? Is he also the same predicament uh, in the fuel sense? So he's dropped way down in the 207s. The last lap was a 203.4, enough to be up in the top part of the grid. But position's not showing, unfortunately, for Burl. Maybe he got onto that bourbon sticky chicken, Chinese. And uh, getting a little bit of effects of the uh, tangy flavour of a nice sweet bourbon. But here we go, John Slow, the man that we know has got fresh tyres. 203.4, 203.5 you could say, a lot faster than the guys in front of him. Yeah, I was thinking that, no matter what, well, I just thought though, if, uh, that's a lot of uh, fuel saving. If uh, we've seen Gunner in for a splash and dash as well, so 20 minutes remaining. I don't think Gunner would have been out of fuel, but he's probably seen his number, and he could exactly be right, but he's actually come out in front of Burl by around about 20 seconds, 24 seconds or so from Burl, if our timing is correct. Sometimes we find the blue column can be a little bit misleading. everyone like to go on board for a lap I'm happy to go on board we'll go in cockpit view so give us a give us a shout out I'll uh, give it to the next uh, three minutes or so and the one that I can see uh, we'll go on board so there's one for Stu so as they all come out I'll write them down and the amount of times that they get whoever gets the favorite will will uh, will put it on Pingu has got one keep them coming guys 
Rangy mm. Rovo in the uh, the lone silver Mercedes in uh, 11th position, doing a good job, as we said earlier. Um, Oz NZ, uh, league organizer, and basically all his members of uh, with himself. He's uh, joined on with the Gravel Trap Legends GTL and all the blue cars. Yeah, okay, Ant, we've got uh, one for uh, obviously Burl. So we'll uh, try and see if we can get on board with Burl. So we've got one for Stu, one for Pingu, and one for Burl. We've 17 minutes remaining, that's when we'll go on board. The, the driver that's got the most votes at this stage. If it's all three, we're just going to have to, uh, we'll, we'll just have to roll the dice, I guess, or we'll just go on all three throughout a lap. So that fog to me seems to be getting um, thicker. So Burl's got two. So there you go, Burl at the moment leading the onboard camera viewing. The viewership, I should say. That's the better word, isn't it? Now, Christopher Razor is a driver that we know is usually fairly fast, and he at the moment is just in front of the bloody night. Look, we got four cars of uh, Gravel Trap Legends. I don't think they're all for position. There's a couple of lap cars involved here. Oh, he's going to be hard on the brakes, and this is the problem. When the slower cars are trying to do their own thing as well, the faster cars come on in. It can be uh, quite tense at times. So here we go. Christopher Razor in sixth position, 204.5. We've got uh, Gunner down in 15th now. He's going to find it hard to get up in the top 10. Uh, top 10 for Gunner is about uh, 26 seconds. So a minute and a half to go, go guys. We've got Spurl leading the way for the, um, the viewership on board. So all those viewers, don't be shy. Look down that order, type in a name. We've got Burl, uh leading over Pingu and Stu as we're going to go on board in cockpit view for a lap around this beautiful circuit. <laughs> you watch Pearl drive enough already. All right, so, well, what do you got, Nomad? Who are you going to pick? And um, what do we got? Volkov. He's in a Mercedes. Do we want to watch? look at a Mercedes, guys? Drive on board of a Mercedes. Volkov. Doing a good job there in 19th. He probably would, would have liked to do a little bit better. As, uh, where was he? He qualified in 16th, so not too bad, to be honest. Ah, there you go. So we'll put three for Pearl. There you go. Just because it and, uh, gave us one. Being a bit cheeky there. So there we go. So Pearl's up by three now. Uh, so it looks like we're going to go Burl, guys. So we've got the 17 minutes up now. I don't think anyone's going to beat the three from Burl. So uh, let's go on board and enjoy a lap around with this man, Burl. Very quiet. You just see though with the guys at the moment, they've dealt with the fog all morning. It's uh, reaching, what is it, 7... 720? Okay, let's, uh, there we go. We've seen each other's rear ends too much. Uh, we're getting to get a reply there from Ant. We don't want too much from Ant, please. Uh, let's keep it nice and clean. But uh, there we go. So it's about 720 or so, 715 in the morning in game time here at the moment. And uh, the fog has just lingered all, mor all morning basically here at uh, Road America. There was talk also that there could have been a possibility of a thunderstorm earlier in the week uh, on Sunday. So we're glad that that hasn't 
happened, but I think the thunderstorm was more for around about midday, so maybe that's the reason why the racer pulled forward to try and avoid. They set it up as real weather in game, so it's picking up the real weather. So anyone out around with, with, uh, with Will's cost, constant, or anyone watching the IMSA, if there's anything going on there, is it uh, foggy or overcast or clear? It looks like it's actually clear skies if this fog is lifted. But if we're talking, I'm not too sure what time it is over there at the moment. Clear and hot. Well, it does look like hot. As I said, uh, during qualifying though, Matt, they were saying the track temperatures was, we're talking degrees Celsius here, was uh, 50, 56 degrees. Uh, these tyres would have been melting. So there we go. We've enjoyed a lap and a bit with Burl. And uh, he's doing a good job there, 203.0, so he's found some pace, so maybe Burl was right. That was almost a 202, that previous lap that we were actually on board. But maybe he felt the power, he could feel his loved one with him, and uh, almost pulled out a 202 that we've said, seen that only Gunners that drive has done a 202. So he's absolutely flying now, so maybe he was fuel saving. And now he knows that he can get to the end, he's turned the wick up. Uh, but still, he's, he's not that quiet um, on the pace of Gunner at the moment. Well, he's faster than Gunner, but he's got a long deficit to Gunner. So here he is coming through this fast kink. I thought some of these cars would have lifted, but it just sounds like they're on full throttle. That's a tricky corner. Obviously the aero's keeping these cars stable. The Chinese food has still got a healthy margin of uh, nine seconds with 13 minutes. I think uh, it's gonna be very hard to uh, see uh, John Slow bridge that gap of 12 seconds that he's got at the moment. So up comes Burl and what's he do this time around? 203.8, so still pretty healthy times from Burl, but uh, this man leading the race with the, uh, probably getting no more tyre wear since the pit stop, 203.9, but I will say he will be still suffering from tyre wear. This is just a graphic, guys, that he's hovering around. Um, it's usually after a pit stop, and sometimes you just find that the, uh, the replay just doesn't show the car being dropped back down on the ground and that's what we end up with, the uh, car still up on the jacks. So he's motoring around fairly well at the moment. Lapping the same time as uh, Theo in the second of the Porsches. Now we thought that the, the Nissans had the upper hand. They were uh, one, two and three in the qualifying. Uh, Theo qualified fourth in the Porsche and he was actually in front of Chinese food in the, in the, on the grid. Um, so he was actually on the third row and we had uh, Chinese food fifth on the third row, on, on the inside of the third row. So he's doing well. John Slow was on the same, on the second row with um, Theo. And as we can see, he is slowly closing that gap, but I think time's going to run out for John. But the leader of the GTL crew, gone in third position. But he may get second. So as we know, he's within two seconds. So we'll keep an eye on that because this is definitely the race on four between him and Theo. I think uh, heel and toe is definitely out of the podium shot, but he has Brett S not too far behind him. The second of the Gravel Trap Legends crew in a Porsche. And he's just hoping that one of his GTL teammates will let him through. One of the back markers through the out of the carousel, which he does. Could be Stu Man the boss. It is Stu Man the boss. He uh, obviously wants to see um, him uh, get through and see if Brett can make this position. Because he's uh, who's coming up behind Stu. I'm not too sure. It was a GTL guy. Or not, it was uh, maybe the Frenchy one? No, it was a Kaz guy car. Probably put a lap down, actually. 
but uh, here we go. The last 10 minutes, Gun 180. He has a race, he's got stories to tell. So has Burl, and uh, that we didn't catch on the stream, but Gun has had an extra pit stop. He's had two pit stops, still in 13th position. And he's got Rangy Rover in front of him. So at the moment, will he try and make those positions? Because it's not going to be really anything other than where he places on the leaderboard for, for the inter-club battle. He needs to find himself in the 10th spot. And he's got to beat this John uh, Do Jonks. As the camera, we're waiting to pick up. Oh, and he's got some splitter damage at the front. This front's boiler. So what's this lap time he's got? Has he made a mistake or is it just visual? 208, so it could be just visual. But uh, Gunner needs to make a margin of around about two or 16, 15, 14 seconds or so. With nine minutes remaining. Could do it. He's uh, four seconds a lap faster. So nine minutes, two minutes something lap, two minute four lap times. What have we got? We've got probably around about maybe five laps. Just depending on where the timer is. Might finish, maybe we could say four. The four falls at 12. He's gonna be right on the back of Jonks at the end of this race if he can get the uh, clear road through. Range is just let him through. So maybe this could be a uh, telling factor. We might see Gunner also trying to pick up a GTL guy in front of, uh, as Cuckoo lets him through, so they know Gunner's are charging. So here we go. So. The battle is between Gunner and Jonks in both Nissans and also for the inner club battle. And we've got Theo, still two seconds. And he is competing against John Slow really well with the time. So he's holding his own. Uh, he's just managing that two second margin at the moment. So great driving by the Kaz crew. So at this stage, if it keeps this way, as Theo has been showing some pace, he's been matching that time by John Slow. He should finish home in second position. So, but John's pushing hard. 0.2 of a second. He was he was 0.1 second faster. We were lucky to see that graphic. The, the Theo was 0.3 off his best, and John Slow was 0.2 off his best through sector one. There he is. There's Theo. Actually, no, that's not Theo. Oh, is it Theo? Yeah, it would be Theo. Yeah, it is. As uh, Chinese food just comes out of the carousel as they enter. Little lift, you can hear. And just remember, John Slow's got fresher tyres as well because these cars didn't get the tyres and leading two cars are double stinting their tyres. Peel Toe Hero, he is a hero at the moment, qualified in ninth in fourth position. The man we're watching right now in the Mercedes, the leading Mercedes of the group. Can he hold off the challenge of Brett S and Christopher Ray, or would it be Brett S behind? And Intel for Brett S, is he is one of the faster GTL drivers. So he's going to come under some pressure late in this race. I'll be clicking and moving these cars. Uh, selections. Oh, big car goes out of Porsche. One of the uh, Porsches runs wide. I'm not too sure, but we will come back to that later. But obviously a car ran on the background. Now, what's the Frenchy one? He's got nothing in between things. So let's have a look at Gunner. He's got a six second margin. It was up It was uh, up to 12 when we started to think about if he can catch Jonks. Can this man hold on? He's roughly lap, oh, and this is a bad lap time, another three seconds, so he's struggling. His best lap time obviously was a, a 2.04 or something like that. And then just in the background, we just caught the lights of Gunner. So it's gonna be tight. 
there was a call to say Gunner will get into the top 10. So if you were a betting man, you'd be really hoping. But the man that said that Gunner would get into the top 10 was a Kaz supporter. So does he want to see Jonks lose that 10th position? Or does he want to win the virtual money? Uh, with Gunner making that top 10 in his prediction he made way back an hour and a bit ago. So it could be a, a sensational call. <laughs> Good on you, Nomad. So here we go, one light of Jonks as he's got some evidence of some damage. This was a better lap this time around. Gunner did a 202.4 on his chase. Now we saw his best lap time, I think, of a 202.3. Let's just confirm. Uh, let's have a look at Gunner. He was a 202.476 is his fastest lap time, which was that previous lap. So there you go. Gunner on a charge. With four minutes remaining, this is the battle that we're looking at for 10th position. And it's this man, Jonks, that's going to try and do some defending very shortly. At this stage, the, the Theo is still holding that two-second margin roughly on John Slow for second position. John Slow in third. Hilto Hero actually just in front of also Brett S. So here we go, Gunner. Will we see this move done before the end of this lap? So here we go, is he gonna do it? Canada corner, is it this a final corner? Or is he gonna get a nice little run down this front straight? Two Nissan, Nissan versus Nissan. Kaz versus GTL, who's gonna win? It looks like Gunner's gonna have down the inside. Yes, he does, just over the strip. So it was this lap as well. So the man that predicted him in 10th also got him for this lap as well. So he's on fire. So well done. So here he goes, so Gunner, I think that's his chase done. He's not gonna have enough time to get Chris the Frenchy one who's in the BMW. Done a great job too, the Frenchy. So awesome job by Chris here in ninth position. But let's have a look at Brett S. He is chasing the heel and toe and he's within a second. So can we get another GTL driver in fourth position? So we've got one in third and one in fifth. For the top five, three Kaz drivers, first, second and fourth. We're riding, we're watching heel toe hero. He's got two minutes remaining. He's got two laps remaining of this race to defend this position. Will he do it? Brett S is a clean driver. I'm not gonna give the commentators a curse. I know Brett is a good, hard charging, close driver, very clean. That time around, Brett was faster we can see in the in the white screen there 204.4 for hill and toe brett 203.7 but here we go guys two more laps remaining the leader of the race chinese food on lap 42 i predicted what 38 39 laps i was well and truly out so mate if i was the bookie you want to take my money i'll give you good odds i'll be broke so here we go, down into turn three we go. Up over the hill, under the bridge. Don't quite get the, uh, the bridge on the camera view here, especially with this fog. The bridge is almost uh, non-existent. The one minute remaining, I would say that that's gonna be Chinese food we can see coming up the top part of your screen of the map there with a the lap car just in front of him. As we said before, the red and white dots of the cars are on the lead lap, on the same lap as the car we're watching. So here we go, with 40 seconds remaining, we're gonna see one more lap of this race. So the heel and toe really motoring 
All the Mercedes fans will be wanting to see heel and tail hold off the Porsche. We've already got Porsche 1 and 2. Then we've got a Nissan in 3. Can the first Mercedes come home in 4th position for Kaz Racing? Up over the rise. Coming into the final, turn 14. Here we go, one more lap remaining guys. Hope you've been enjoying this race, the Intercontinental Club Challenge here in Road America between Kaz and GTL. Kaz being the Northern American neighbors of us, long neighbors compared to us Australia, New Zealand. GTL Southerners on, on the outside, Brett S and Heel and Toe Hero defending down into turn one, but is he vulnerable now? As Brett S couldn't get that power down. So, Heel and Toe's just got a little bit of breathing space. So nice driving. So here we go. We'll keep an eye, we'll make sure that we catch the, uh, the leader, take the checker. He's half a second, I mean half a minute up the road, going through the carousel, I think it is. Chinese food, yes he is, so just so I know, there he is on the exit of the carousel. But it's this man here that we're watching. A lot of cheering going for the Kaz Motorsport team of Heel Toe Hero. Can he be the hero that everyone wants to see? At this rate, it looks like that the uh, Kaz crew will probably win this challenge. There's a lot of Kaz cars up in the pointy end. Around the carousel for the final time. This is gonna be interesting coming out into the uh, tight right hand corner at the top of the circuit. But here it is, this man here as we pick him up, coming up over the rise, it's this man, Chinese Food, that takes victory with an outstanding drive. Well done to Chinese Food for the Kaz, the first of the Porsche. Second is Theo. Well done, Theo Luke comes home in second, just behind John Slow in third. But let's get back to heel toe and hero. He's held off. Brett S through the corner where we thought that he may have been vulnerable. Here he goes into the final corner. Can he make it nice and clean? Look at the Porsche Brett S trying to get the power down, but the Mercedes is going to be too strong. And it's heel toe hero that comes home in fourth position. Well done. And what a drive. The first Mercedes home in fourth position. And we've got another Porsche, three Porsches in the top five. Christopher Razor, he looks like he's going to come home in sixth position, red nose. What else battle have we got? Gunner's got up into ninth position. So who's dropped down from ninth? We knew that he got tenth from Jonks, but someone else that we have, we have kept, we've missed has dropped down from the top ten. The Frenchy one was in ninth, so he's gone into eighth. We haven't lost the Frenchy one in this nice, clean BMW for Kaz Motorsport. Cuckoo, you could be right. Thank you, it might have been Cuckoo. But here we go, the Frenchy one, nice drive from him. In home in eighth position. Gunner got home in ninth, so a good comeback drive from him. Two pit stops, one extra pit stop than everyone else. Cuckoo in tenth, let's have a look to see if he's got holding damage, but no, he's not. And uh, he's just coming home from Jocks, who's just in 11th position in that Nissan as well. So there you go. Dan in 12th. Well done to the uh, ANZ car, the lone Mercedes, the silver one in 13th. And Pingu. We had a vote for him to go on board. And uh, there he goes. But it's this man, Chinese food. Can't even do a donut because he's a hovercraft. So there he goes, he's in uh, first position with the loop in second. Here he goes, he's doing his donuts now. On and at hard with a hovercraft. But what a race that was, guys. Kaz, I think, comes out for a second year running in um, first position. Uh, we, we saw that the loop. I just want to try and get some screenshots if I can, guys, So before the lobby goes out because I'm not the host here and I don't know if it'll go. But here we go. So, well done to Chinese Food and the Loop. The Porsches out in front. Then John Slow, Heel the Toe Hero. What a run that was. We were on board while we were watching him. 
just defending from heel from Brett S. Christopher Razor came home in sixth position over Red Nose. Then it was the French he won in that clean BMW. Well done to Chris. Uh, Gun 80, 80 in ninth. Cuckoo in tenth, who we think dropped out from that top po little position. Jonks dropped the tenth. He, he was holding that, but just couldn't defend in the end on older tyres. Uh, Dan in twelfth. Rangy Rover uh, in thirteenth. Tactical Nuclear. Well done to him in 14th, Pingu. Burl, well, mate, you had the love, but one lap down, the first car to lead home, the uh, cars were a lap down. Extra pit stop from Burl as well that we didn't see. So he had two two in the end. Um, then we had HDSTN, uh, the next car lap down, with Volkov in 17th. Mark 860, well done in 18. Uh, had a little bit of an instant there that we saw, uh, defending pretty strong, but uh, still came home there, Mac attacking 19th. Stu found himself in the 20th. He'd be happy with that, with a big quality field that we had. Jeff, we know that he got caught out in that first lap incident. He battled hard to see where he could get, but got to the 21st. Carl for GTL in 22nd. Max Power and the bloody nine retired there at the end as well. So don't know if that was because he quit out before the timer, but there you go. What a race it was. I'm glad you enjoyed our stream. Uh, let's have a look to see there. I won't have the results f for you guys in the end for the points, but I'm sure your individual league will end up having that for you uh, to see where Kaz came over GTL. But at this stage, as we know that it was, Kaz definitely had the numbers of the cars up front. So my prediction is Kaz has done it two from two. So we'll have to wait till next year to see if the uh, Aussie NZ guys can sneak a victory home uh, between the American and Canadians of Kaz Motorsport. What a great format they have uh, created. Hopefully it becomes bigger and bigger for an annual event. It looks like it went smooth, 24 cars. Um, and all 24 finishing other than that retirement of the bloody nine at the end. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. I've been your host, Neil Haynes, known as Woody Lizard, on track in the sim world. I will see you guys hopefully next year, actually behind the wheel, and we'll hopefully have someone else doing a live stream. Glad you enjoyed it. Until next time, be safe, everyone. Cheerio.